no one else is going to be living your life. No one else is sitting in your shoes. So why would you let someone else dictate it? Why would you let someone else tell you what you need to do? Why are we stopping ourselves from making friendships that would allow us to be authentic, from being in relationships that would allow us to be authentic? That is what I want to chat about today. Welcome back to Organized Chaos. My name is Regan, and if you are new to this channel, I am so very happy that you are here. Make sure you grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. Today, I wanted to have just a little bit of a girly chat, just a little bit of a, you know, like a sit down conversation with you all about the concept of authenticity. Authenticity is something that we don't find as often in today's world as I wish that we did, especially online. I feel like it's a rarity to find people, and that's changing, who are really willing to show up as their true and their full self. We're all so afraid of being vulnerable. No, I, I get it. Vulnerability is freaking scary. You're putting yourself out there. But this concept, this thought, this fear that someone else is judging us causes us to be inauthentic and then creates this cycle where everyone else around us refuses to be authentic as well. And then how are any of us having relationships that are fulfilling in any sense of the word? I want all of us to be able to feel safe living our authentic life. Now, a big part of that is creating the self-confidence, is creating the self-love needed in order to really to feel safe in showing up as your true self. When you talk about work, when you talk about friendships, when you talk about family, when you talk about life, people often say, you just need to show up as your true self. But I think it's often underestimated how hard that actually is. It's really hard to walk into a room and say, hey, I am here. This is who I am. Judge me. I dare you. But that is the goal that I want all of us to get closer to. That is the journey that I am on right now in trying to find ways that I can become my most authentic self. Not everyone is going to agree with what you do. Everyone is going to have a different opinion on how you should live your life. What you need to end up telling them is, I'm not going to listen to you. It is my body. It is my choice. It is my hair. It is my choice. It is my career. It is my choice. It is the place I want to live. It is my choice. And a lot of the decisions that I have made throughout my life, if I had been truly concerned about what someone else really, really was thinking, I just wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have moved abroad. I've now been abroad for 10 years. I met my husband here abroad, and that would have meant a very different life trajectory for me. I wouldn't have quit my job because God knows everyone had an opinion on what I wanted to do after I quit my nine to five. But but I started this channel. I'm having conversations with all of you. I've been able to build this business that actually fuels me and makes me feel so excited to get up every single morning and go to work. It would not have been possible if I didn't feel comfortable sitting in front of this camera, being vulnerable, sharing my stories, having conversations, and if I worried what the hell other people thought about me. I remember when we were talking about getting bunnies. People had opinions left and right. You shouldn't get bunnies. They destroy everything. They blah, 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 blah. The reality is, Life is what you make of it. You make these decisions and you can pivot and you can change and you're really allowed to do what you want to do. No one else is going to be living your life. No one else is sitting in your shoes. So why would you let someone else dictate it? Why would you let someone else tell you what you need to do? I want all of us to feel safe to be authentic. And you know what? If you're not safe to be authentic in the environment that you're in, how can we change that? How can we start to shift your mindset so that you can become safe? so that you can really start to step outside of your comfort zone, start exploring. Maybe that's changing the color of your hair. Maybe that's moving. Maybe that's changing your jobs. If there's something that you have wanted to do for a very long time and you just haven't done it yet, think about why that is. Why are we stopping ourselves from living this really authentic life? Why are we stopping ourselves from making friendships that would allow us to be authentic, from being in relationships that would allow us to be authentic? A big part of authenticity is getting to know yourself. If you are not actively doing the work to get to know yourself, it's going to be really, really hard for you to feel like you can show show up authentically in any space, no matter the moment, no matter the time, no matter what you're wearing, how you present, it's going to be really, really hard because you're not going to understand why you're reacting certain ways, how your experiences have affected you, and what you want to do moving forward. Your anxiety, those habits that you're trying to kick, your negative self-talk, all of that would be truly impossible to change without really finding the self-confidence, the trust, and the comfort within yourself. I think often we have a lack of authenticity because we just don't understand who we are on the inside and we haven't built that self-love or that self-confidence. We're not comfortable in our own skin. I can hear your brains overthinking from here and I need that to stop. I'm begging you to have it stop because that 
that is what is going to limit you in taking that next step forward. Now, I'm saying all this for myself as much as I'm saying it for you because I definitely get caught in those negative spirals of thinking. I get caught in that spiral of, I can't do this. I won't be able to do this. No one will like me. No one will like what I'm putting out. And while some of that is a part of the process and is a natural part of just doing something new, it also limits heavily where you can actually go. Imagine if you woke up and actually did the things that you wanted to do. What would that look like? What would that feel like? How would it feel to be able to wake up and wear what you wanted to wear? Dye your hair the color that you wanted to dye it. Get that tattoo, move to that place, change that job. There have been so many different times in my life where I have noticed that I've just gotten in this rut of complaining. I've complained, I've complained, I've complained, but I haven't actively done anything to change it. You have the power within yourself to make those changes in your life. You are the only one that's really going to be able to make those changes for yourself. Advocate for yourself, set the boundaries, negotiate, communicate. Without you actually understanding who you are on the inside, all of those different pieces are going to be really difficult. If you don't know your values, this is something that people go through oftentimes in therapy or if you have a coach, go and do that exercise. Learn what words are important to you. Authenticity is one word that is hugely important to me. Vulnerability, generosity, honesty. These are values of mine that I try and follow through with in any interaction that I have in the way that I show up and how I approach problems because that is what is important to me. I want you to go and learn what is important to you. If you have those value words already in your head, write them down. Start to write down a list of what would it look like if you actually were this person sitting in front of you. Now, what I don't want to do is create this inattainable version of that, right? We're not talking about losing a ton of weight, getting super muscular. What I'm talking about around authenticity is showing up as your true self, recognizing that you are messy, that you are imperfect, and that that is okay. Because authenticity is not how you look on the outside. It is who you are on the inside. I don't care what you look like on the outside. If you want to be an actress, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to go and change career paths, stay in the same career path, go and travel to a country that other people don't want to travel to with you. I want to see you do all of that and more. So if we understand ourselves, well, we'll be able to actually start to take steps in that direction. Now, authenticity also requires speaking up. If you were taught to speak up and you have a very loud voice and you don't mind saying exactly what you feel, know that I have a big ass crush on you. That is not how I grew up. I somehow learned over the course of my life that I needed to be quiet. I needed to stop having opinions. I needed to stop knowing what I really wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. I'm planning a trip with a friend right now, one of my absolute best friends. I was so proud of myself because when we sat down and started chatting about where we wanted to go and what we wanted to do, I refused to allow myself to write, I don't care. Because you know what? I do care. I do care and I want you to care. I want the other person to care too. I wanted her to care about where we were going to go. That's the only way that both of you are actually going to end up getting what you want to get out of any sort of situation. Part of the reason that I had so much anxiety when I was younger is because I wasn't prioritizing myself. Everything I did, I did because of somebody else. I did because I wanted somebody else to make that decision for me. But it's so empowering to be able to make that decision for yourself. And if you're somebody who finds it really hard to make those small decisions for yourself, on a day-to-day -day basis. If you're somebody who constantly messages your friends before you leave the house, what do I wear? Or if you're somebody who constantly needs someone to read over the email for you before you send it out, just try, try once sending out that email without thinking about it. Let's start experimenting in small ways that are safe with being us, showing ourselves that when we are us, we're still there, we survived it, we're okay. You sit there and you go, wow, I've actually expressed myself and I've expressed what I've wanted and that will build your self-confidence. It reduces your anxiety, it reduces your stress, it proves to your brain that you are worth being here because I can tell you a million times that you are worth being here, you are worth your opinions, but until you actually really start to believe and understand that and show your own brain that and show your own brain that it is safe is not going to happen. But it takes those baby steps. I remember that I really started to experiment with who I was right in the middle of my divorce when I was 26. Now, I was 26. I was so afraid to be getting divorced, changing my life so drastically, but I knew that I needed to pursue a more authentic life. I just wasn't living the life that I was meant to and that needed to change. So I dyed my hair, gave myself a little bit of a pink highlight situation, felt great about it, received 
get terrible feedback. But it was a moment where I went, okay, you don't have to like what I put on my body, but it is my body and it is my choice. And so I'm going to allow myself the freedom. And that was a safe way to do it because no one was going to do anything to me. It gave me the ability to start to test the waters. Oh, and you know that I can't talk about authenticity without talking about boundaries. If you're not setting boundaries, you're not telling people how you want to live. You're not advocating for yourself. You are not communicating what is important to you. Earlier on, I talked about how you have to be able to tell people what you want. In the same way, you have to be able to tell people what you do not want. Something I am not doing anymore is showing up to events that I am just not bought into. Showing up to events that I know I don't have the energy for because I know I'm not going to show up in an authentic way. Nor am I going to be able to show up for anything else throughout the rest of the week or the weekend in an authentic way. That's just the way my brain works. But boundaries can often be really hard to start experimenting with. If you're someone who finds it really difficult to experiment with boundaries, here's something that you can do. It's one of my favorite things that my therapist taught me. Your brain does not actually know the difference between a conversation that you are having to yourself, to the wall, to your therapist, or a conversation that you're having with somebody else. So what you're going to do is you're going to sit and you are going to practice setting that boundary. You can practice setting that boundary out loud, sitting down with a friend, but as long as you are practicing that boundary, your brain is going to get used to it. It's going to get comfortable with the idea and you're going to build that confidence within yourself. So when it comes time to actually say the thing to the person, it's going to be 10 times easier and you're going to be able to show up as yourself. I mean, we've all had an event before that we haven't wanted to go to and we don't need to use events only as the example here, but it's a great example to use. We've all had that thing that we don't want to do, but we have said yes to anyway. I'm hoping some of you have had an equal experience where you have said no and just felt the weight lift off your shoulders. No, I'm sorry, I can't attend. No, I am not able to do that. And that freeing feeling is what I want all of us to chase. Move closer to that feeling because you know you're onto something. You know you're onto something if you feel that weight lift off your shoulders. Authenticity and living an authentic life should not bring you down. It should not be something that feels tough. It should not be something that feels wrong. On the contrary, it should feel so freaking right. If there's been a change that you've wanted to make, if there's been a conversation that you've needed to have for a really long time, but you've just put it on the back burner, start to have it. When you show up for people, whether or not they agree with what you are saying, it shows that you are authentic, that you have confidence, and that you respect yourself enough to give your opinion. I don't know about you, but when it comes to friends, I don't want yes friends. I don't want friends who just tell me, yes, I look great. Yes, I'm doing the right thing. Yes, 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 yes. My best friends are the ones that I can have honest and open conversations with. My best friends are the ones that allow me to be vulnerable, that allow me to show up and go, am I doing the right thing here? Authenticity is not always about knowing exactly what you want to do. It's about having the confidence in order to be vulnerable. And then those deep friendships are built when someone else has the confidence and the vulnerability and the authenticity to be that person right back for you. When you show up as your authentic self, people are drawn to that. If you're someone who's like, I am really struggling to find friendships. I did an episode on how to build friends as an adult because that can be quite difficult in the way that I view friendships. So if you haven't watched that episode, make sure you go and watch it. I'll drop it in the description box. In that video, I talked about how important it is to find the people that mean the most to you, to find your chosen family. A big way to do that is by being an authentic person yourself. People are drawn to authenticity. People are drawn to confidence. You are going to find it so much easier to have relationships with people when you can show up as your most authentic self. It is so freeing to be able to walk into a room, smile on your face and go, I'm going to be able to have a conversation with anybody I want to because I know I am worth being here. I know I'm worth having a conversation with. I used to be the person that used to go home and practically write down word for word, script for script, what I said to every single person and convince myself that they didn't like me and why they didn't like me. I don't want any of us to live like that. I want us to be able to go and feel fulfilled with the interactions we have in the outside world and I want us to be fulfilled with the interactions we have in our own head. Self-confidence is a hard one though, because it definitely doesn't happen in a day, but you are worth working on yourself over and over again. If you just continue to chip away at it, I guarantee that authenticity, that trust, that comfort within yourself will come. That self-confidence comes from knowing who you are. So again, working with a therapist, working with a coach, understanding yourself, journaling. Journaling has been one of the biggest ways that I have been able to figure out 
who I am on the inside. Because when I journal, all of the thoughts and feelings that I have in my head, I just dump onto the page. I love the concept of free writing because I just sit there and spew everything that's going on inside my head out onto the paper. I don't worry about grammar. I don't worry about what I'm saying, how it sounds, because I am the only person that I'm going to read it to. Through journaling, you can start to experiment. You can start to figure out what your hopes are, what your dreams are, what your beliefs are, what your goals are in an environment that feels safe to you. Somewhere where nobody except for yourself can judge it. Because we are our harshest critics. People are not paying attention to us near the amount that we think they are. I wish that people were paying attention to us more often, but they are absolutely not. And so that's what gets us stuck. That's what gets us caught up. I so many times will have a big lofty goal in my head, but be afraid to share it because I'm afraid of what someone else is going to think. So the first thing that I do is I actually sit down and I write it down. I write it down on a piece of paper. I write it down on a dream board, write it down on a journal, whatever it is. And I flesh out the idea. It helps build that self-confidence that, you know what? Yes, I have thought through this. I support it. I know that I can achieve this and that I want to achieve this. And then I start to make changes in my life in order to live that way. So journaling can be so powerful in helping you build that self-confidence and helping you move towards building a much more authentic life. I want us all to start to practice in being our truest selves. But being your truest self also requires support. It requires support within yourself. And so make sure you're doing things for you. Self-care is another incredible way to make sure that you are supporting yourself so that when it is time for you to show up, you can do so to the best of your ability. I have a whole video on self-care that pairs so well with this video. If you haven't watched it already, make sure you go over to that video after this in order to learn more about how you can really take care of yourself, build a team around yourself, understand yourself, and live a happier and more fulfilled life because isn't that the goal that we're all trying to reach? There you have it. That brings us to the very end of this episode. Thank you all so much for sticking around. By showing up here, this is me being authentic. This is me being vulnerable. This is me saying, hey, this is who I am. This is how I think. This is how I feel. And I want the dialogue to get started with you all. I want to hear from you all how you live authentically, what authenticity looks like for you, and how you're planning on changing some of the habits that you have right now that are limiting your ability to be authentic. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you tune in next week for another episode of Organized Chaos. My name is Regan and I will see you next time. Thanks everyone. <laughs>